Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Seventh Heaven, starring Jennifer Jones, Van Johnson, and Jean Herschel, with Billy Gilbert. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. In the history of the theater, ten years is a very short time, a fraction of the centuries since the first Greek play was staged in Athens. But in the history of radio, ten years is a milestone that few programs have been privileged to reach, which makes this a very special night in the Lux Radio Theater, our tenth anniversary on the air. And it's not just our tenth anniversary, it's yours, too. Or... As an audience, your enthusiasm and appreciation have helped build this theater through the years. That's why we've asked for your suggestions on the plays and stars you want to hear. And for your generous response, I'm deeply indebted to you. Your letters have come not just by thousands, but by tens of thousands. And they'll serve as a guide for us throughout the whole of our 10th anniversary season. We can't bring you all your choices at once but we'll bring you as many as we can, as soon as we can, and make this anniversary season something to look forward to. For all our progressiveness, we Americans are sentimental people. While we look forward, we look back at the same time, back to the things that have thrilled us, touched us, and warmed our hearts. And our play tonight, which is jointly produced by you and us, is one of those sentimental landmarks, the first play ever presented on the Lux Radio Theater. Seventh Heaven, the story of love and heroism that has grown in stature through the years, a drama as great and timely now as the day you applauded it at our premiere. Late in Paris, it expresses the unconquerable spirit of that great French capital, so recently restored to freedom. And in our cast, we're bringing you stars so often requested in your letter. Jennifer Jones, recent Academy Award winner, Van Johnson, who has won the hearts of all America, and the beloved character actor, Jean Hersholt. And I told Dorothy L'Amour, who was in our play last week, that we were having seventh heaven. It led to a sentimental conversation about Paris. And she spoke of a friend of hers, who just three weeks ago returned from the French capital, where he'd been on military business. He found the French people deeply appreciative of all the good things the Americans were bringing back to France. And he told of trading one cake of Lux toilet soap for a case of excellent champagne. Ooh. Which shows that Paris still intends to be a city of smart and lovely women. And it shows, too, what a cake of Lux soap can do if it's the right kind. And now, for the 465th time in ten years, the curtain rises on our play of the evening, the first act of Seventh Heaven. Starring Jennifer Jones as Diane, Ann Johnson as Chico, and Jean Hersholt as Father Chevion, with Billy Gilbert as Boole. <laughs> Paris, 1914. In a few weeks preceding the Great War, the city waits breathlessly for word which will plunge the world toward destruction. There's only one quarter where life goes on in the usual way, the Paris slum. There, amid poverty and squalor, in a world of screams and curses, street brawls and petty thievery, a teeming population fights for its existence in the dump heap of the city. On the darkest and dirtiest of these streets, a familiar cry goes up. Through the crowd slips a thin, long-nosed creature with a quick, beady eye. Like a rabbit, he darts and turns to the gendarmes close behind him. Stop that man! Stop him! Through the alley there! Over this way! Keep your eye on him! Here! Here! Here, here he is! Come here, you! No! Here. No! I've got him! Come along! Come along! No! Yes. I haven't done anything! Let me go! Let me go! I haven't done anything! I swear Stay it! Be quiet! Stand still! What's your name? My name? He's got no name! We call him Sewer Rat! 
sewer rat. Yeah, that's right. That's what they call me, sewer rat. I cleaned the sewer, but I haven't done anything, I swear. Oh, of course you haven't. Except to steal a watch and silver chain from Father Chevion. A watch? I stole a watch? Here it is. I found it in his pocket. No, I didn't steal it. I swear Stay I didn't. Be quiet. Dupre. Yes? Clear a path to the church door at the end of the street. We'll take this sewer rat to see Father Chevion. All right, stand back there. Go on, stand back. Stand back there. sisters, when they are found, Father Chevion, will inherit the bulk of their uncle's estate. Now, have you any information of these girls, Father? Their names again, Mushi Pushak? Volmir. Nana Volmir is the older sister, Dion the younger. Yeah, and Nana. That's right. They ran away from their uncle's farm some years ago. My firm has finally managed to trace them to this quarter. <clears throat> Naturally, we're anxious to settle the estate. Naturally. Uh, tell me, Monsieur Boussac, this inheritance the girls are to receive, are there any complications? Well, their uncle was rather uncompromising at one point, the matter of morality. I see. And you expect to find morality in this quarter, Monsieur? I hope to find it, Father. Yes. Well, I shall let you be the judge of that. Well, then you know these girls? I know them. I shall take you to them in the morning, Monsieur. Excuse me. Certainly. What is it? Good evening, Father. Oh, good evening. Let me go, please. No, I you didn't... don't. This is the man, Father. We found your watch in his pocket. Did you? This is your watch, isn't it? Yes, it is my watch. Thank you, Father. Come along, you. Oh, oh but wait. This man here, there's no need to arrest him. But he stole your watch. It was my joke, monsieur. A joke on him. The watch is made of tin. Tin? It has no value. Is there anything I can do, Father? Uh, no, thank you. This, uh, this man stole a tin watch from me. A tin watch? <laughs> yes. You see, with that as my bait, once in a while I find out who the thieves are, and when I found them, I convert them or, or try to. I buy these watches by the dozen. I see. You may leave the prisoner here, officer. Very well, Father, if you wish. Good night. Come here, please. Sit down. What is your name? Uh, they call me a sewer rat. You work in the sewers? Yes, yes, with Chico. Chico? I work with Chico. We clean the sewers. Chico? I've been wanting to meet him for some time. I've heard a great deal about Chico. Why don't you bring him to me? Chico? Oh, I couldn't do that. He hates priests. Oh, and why? Chico says there is no God. That's what he says. He's, uh, he's an atheist. That's what he is. Well, we must speak to him about that sometime. Now, as for you, you believe in God, of course. Oh, yes. Yes. Now, I want you to go into the church, through that little door there, and pray. Yes, Father. And you won't steal again, will oh, you? Oh, no, oh, no, I hope not. Yes, I hope not, too. You think that's wise, Father? That creature belongs in jail, not in church. Does he? I don't know. Sometimes I am a little discouraged. But then I stand here by the window and I look across the roofs. And I think of all the people under them who need help. The two girls, Nana and Diane, the man Chico, perhaps, as strong as a young bull and an atheist. And there, look. You see that man down there, cranking his taxi cab? Yes. <laughs> he called today Louise after his old horse. That man is Papa Bull. He's a thief. Purveyor of stolen goods. Why not have him arrested? It's been done. But has it changed him? No. I'll find a way to help him sometime. He'll come to me, as all the others will. I'm just waiting. Waiting. <coughs> come now. Don't fail me. My old friend. Start my beauty. Now. One, two, three, four. Eloise, is that the way to act? Are you sick? Shut up, you monster of tin and grease. I'll conquer you yet. <laughs> hey, what's the matter? I 
Bien, bien, hey, bien, it's me, Papa Bull. I'm gonna hurt you again. Look at me. I'm all right. It's nothing. Why do you let her do it? Why don't you hit her back? I'm afraid of her, Papa Bull. And she's my sister. Sister? That doesn't stop her. Well, perhaps you're right. It's better not to cross her when she's been drinking. Absence, eh? Yes. Bad. Very bad. Why don't you take her away, dear? Where? She wouldn't leave here. We lived on a farm once. She hated it. She made me run away with her. A farm? <laughs> I don't blame her. I wonder what it would be like, Papa Boo, to see the clear sky again. To lie in the grass and smell the clean air. Earth? Why, well, that's dirt. And you'd catch cold, too. There she is, up in the window. Do you hear? Yes, Nana, I'm going. I'm going now. Well, Eloise, we have our own troubles, huh? Come on now. One, two, three, four. Good evening, sore rat. What do you want, huh? Look, I have money, Bull. Money? Where did you get money? Where? Nowhere. I was in the church. I was praying in the church. You mean you took it from the poor box? Sure, rat. Oh, she... how much is it? Ten francs. Enough for supper for Chico and me. Enough for us all. Where is Chico? In the sewer, over here beneath the cover. Well, lift it up and call him. Oh, you want me to do everything? You call him. Oh, mother in heaven, these things are too heavy. Now, where is he? How can you see anything down here anyway? Chico, hey! Chico! He's coming this way. Uh, how can a man who works in a sewer find it in his heart to sing? Oh, Chico, he sings all the time. Hey, Chico! Hey, fool! Come on up here. Coming. Get out of the way. Here, give me your hand. Oh. Ah, fresh air again. <laughs> Put that cover back, Sue, all right. Well, Papa Boo, how are you tonight? You sound happy, Chico. Oh, I am. And do you know why, Papa Boo? Because I've discovered something, and it's this. If you pretend you're happy, and you pretend long enough, you will be happy. I proved that to myself. That's why I'm such a remarkable fellow. That's why I'm an atheist. Uh, look, Chico, money. We're going to have supper. Ten francs. Oh, we are going to have a feast. No place is too good for us tonight. I know the best cafe in the quarter. The hole in the sock. And now let's drink to something else. Come on, Bull, what shall it be? Uh, no room for anything else. No more. Where were you? Where were you? Now, what's all that? Ah, uh, none again. The end must have been late with the absence. Do I have to sit and wait for you all night? No, no. <laughs> She's beating her. Uh, let them fight. Let them fight. Why does the young one stand for it? Let her alone, do you hear? <laughs> let the girl alone. Get away from me. I said to let her alone. Don't, don't let him hit me. Get out. Go on. Get out of here. You come home, Dion. You hear me? Come home. Go on. <laughs> you, you there on the floor. Stop crying and stand up. Now, come with me. Let us out there. Where are we going? Well, what does it matter? What are you crying for? You're not being beaten now. Shut up. Yes. You can walk over there and sit down. There on the church steps. Well, this is a fine ending to a nice supper. I, I didn't mean to bother you. Please go back. Oh, now you want me to go back. I give up my wine and my friends to get you out of there, and now you want me to go back. Maybe I should. It's not of my affair anyway. Of course it isn't. Every time I come up out of the sewer, I get into trouble. Then I'll go. You have troubles enough. <laughs> I'm probably one of a half dozen men in all Paris who at this moment has practically no troubles to speak of. That's because of my principles. And shut up. I can't help it. I know. You did a little sick, huh? A little pass off for a little while. Who was that girl? My sister. Sister? Did she beat you like a street dog? Well, that's <laughs> justice for you. That's love. That's why I don't believe in God. That's why I'm an atheist. What? Well, why do you look at me like that? Is there anything so strange in a man not believing in God? You must believe in him. It's the only hope there is. You must have faith. In religion? <laughs> 
Let me tell you something. I am an atheist because I was religious. I've gone all through that. Didn't you ever pray? Didn't you ever... Pray? Oh, I prayed. But he never heard me. And I gave him a fair test, too. Three times. Three times, you see. First, I prayed to be a streetwalker. Above all things, my ambition was to be a streetwalker and work in the clean air on top of the ground. So I chose the finest church in Paris, the Cathedral of Notre Dame. And with my good money, I bought the biggest candle in the place, five francs. And, and you didn't become a streetwalker? Of course I didn't. I'm still in the sewer. That's because, because you prayed with words. And a candle. Five francs worth of candles. But no soul. Who has no soul? You had, you would use it to pray with. Your soul and your heart. Just words and nothing. Listen, I am a philosopher. If you think I just gave up, you're crazy. I said, perhaps God meant me for a sewer man. All right, I'd be a sewer man. Then you did give up. No. No, I just changed to something else I wanted. Again, I put my hand in my pocket. Five more francs for another big candle. This time I wanted a wife. A good wife with yellow hair. Well, yellow hair is not so hard to find. Oh, I don't mean yellow hair like yours. Much, much prettier. And did you get her? No. I'm still in the sewer and I still live alone. You're like a child. You should have kept on praying. Well, who said I didn't? I'm broad minded. I gave him still another chance. This time I wanted. This time I wanted an experience. Everything we do is an experience. I don't understand what you mean. Well, I didn't expect you to. Nobody but Chico understands these big thoughts. I wanted for once in my life to have enough money to climb into a taxi cab like a gentleman and say, You driver, make the grand tour. You prayed to God for that when all you had to do was ask Papa Boo. He would have done it for you for nothing. Well, that is not the point. First, I was going to tell the driver, take me to the Place Concorde, then to the Champs-Élysées, then to the Arc de Triomphe, and so to home at number 48 Rue Notre-Dame de Lorette. And the devil with the expense. Yes, I gave the Lord every opportunity. And what did you get? Candle smoke. Fifteen francs worth of candle smoke. That's why I'm an atheist. I can't believe you really are, my son. Who's that? Someone standing there in the shadows. Good evening, Diane. Father Chevia. Good evening, Chico. Well, forgive me, Father, but I'm, I'm not very happy to see you. I'm not at all fond of priests. So I understand. But I want to do something for you. I don't want anything. I ask for nothing. You did once. Fifteen francs worth. So you were listening to me. Be charitable, Chico. Let us say I overheard. And since the good Lord is rather busy answering all the requests made of him, let me answer one for him. You wish to be a street walker, washer, Chico? You are hereby appointed. What? You can do this? It's done. Here. Take this card to the commissioner. Card the hose are yours, Chico. You see? A street washer. Now, I'm going to ask something for you. Take those two medals of St. John and St. Agnes. Wait a minute. Religious medals? They protect you from danger, Chico. Please give them a chance. And whether you like it or not, I'll... I'll pray for you. Good night, Diane. Good night, Father. I'm coming to see you tomorrow in the morning. Good night, Chico. And remember, the good Lord has a sense of humor, too. Did you hear him? I'm a street washer. I've risen. I've risen. I've got to tell Bull. Wait here for me. I'll be back. <laughs> alone? I'll sit by you on the step. That's what I like best about a church. The step. No one ever speaks to me. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking. Deep problems. I'm very interested in deep problems. There is a God. Yes, I believe in God. God just helped Chico, but he doesn't know it. I wonder if God would be very angry if a person grew tired. Instead of waiting for God to come to her, she tried to go to God. Oh, that's a very deep problem. Very deep, yes. Where are you going? Let me come? No, go back. But there's nothing down there, just the river at the end of the street. That's... Leon! Leon, where are you going? It's just the river. I'll tell Chico!
I get to a nice son to marry you. Forgive me. Please forgive me. There she is. Hey, come back here. Come here. What are you trying to do? Let me alone. No, you don't. Stand over there. Away from that wall. That's a terrible thing to do. How do you know? How does anyone know? There are worse things than this. You've no right to stop me. All right, then. Jump off. Drown yourself. Lie in the morgue with a rope around your hair. What do I care? Women like you, you sicken me. You know, I'm still shaking all over. Sit back a little. Why would you want to do a thing like that? Because I can't go on. Because I'm afraid. Afraid of your sister? Of everything. Oh, no, no, you can't be. You have courage. The idea of jumping into a river, that takes courage. I couldn't do it. You could, if you felt there was no hope. But you say you don't like this life. You don't like it? You're not bad? Why? Why do you say that? Oh, I don't know why, but I know. If you don't like it, it, it makes all the difference. Look at me. I never liked the sewer, but it's never made me feel low. Why, sometimes I feel like a king for no reason at all. I've noticed that I'm a very remarkable fellow. Is there nothing you're afraid of? Ah, not a thing. Why should I be? Why should you be? Someday you stand up and fight your sister. That'll make you free. Be yourself again. What will that be, myself? Brave, strong, happy. It's easy if you give yourself a chance. Look at me. I've risen to be a street washer all on my own, and I have two religious medals worth at least 15 francs. That's good. You could be like me, too. Could I? Of course. You know, I... I feel sorry for you. Oh, there I go. I'll have you on my hands if I'm not careful. You can go. I'm not keeping you. That's the way to talk, but I didn't mean it. I'm your friend. Do you like that? Yes. Listen. Well, life is never dull here, is it? Come on, let's see what's happening. The police. They're taking people right and left. A raid. Diane, look. They have your sister. No, no. You, come here. What are you doing here? Nothing. What's your occupation? I, I have no work. Dupre, take this girl, too. No. Wait, you can't arrest her. She hasn't done anything. You'll have to prove that in court. I say you can't take her. Since when are you giving orders, sewer man? Sewer man? I'm a street washer, and I say you can't take her. We have orders to take every unmarried girl in this quarter for questioning. Get out of the way. Wait, wait. That's just it. Unmarried girls. She's married. Yes? Who's her husband? Who? What do you mean, who? Who? Me. She's my sister. She's not his wife. One moment. Where do you live, sewer man? Street washer. 48 Rue Notre Dame de Lorette. We'll be up to see you tomorrow. Now get along. Get along, everyone. Now, why did I do a thing like that? Why did I say that? Because you're kind. Yes, and I'm ruined. They'll come tomorrow and find I have no wife, and they'll take my new job away from me. That's, that's what I get for being so kind. If I could be there when they come... I could say I was your wife. We could say we were we were married in Italy. That's why it isn't on the record. Say, that's pretty good. And I won't have to go back to the sewer. That's very good. Bull! Hey, hey, Bull! Yes? Wind up your taxi. Start her up. Sure. What for? You're going to drive me home. Me and my bride. Hey, look! She's really started! Eloise! It's a miracle! Here, get in, get in. Now, remember, Dion, you mustn't take this seriously. I'm only doing this to help you. You're not going to take advantage of me. No, oh, no. Good. Hurry up. Hurry up before it stops again. Where to? Make the grand wedding tour, Boo. First to Champs-Élysées, then to the Place de la Concorde, then to the Arc de Triomphe, and then home. And to the devil with the expense. For tonight, I am the Bank of France. Hooray! It stopped. Oh, never mind. The Bank of France will have to walk. Come on. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In a few moments, Mr. DeMille and our stars will return in Act Two of Seventh Heaven. Now, here's our Hollywood reporter, Libby Collins, with news about the screen stars. Tell us, Libby, what famous lovely is in the spotlight tonight? Why, Mr. Kennedy, this time I'm going to let you guess who she is. 
I'll give you some information, and then... Oh, oh quiz stuff, huh? Mm-hmm. All right, I'm game. Well, this star is quite young, yet she's had a number of starring picture roles. She was signed up for her first picture because of her success in the engineer role of a Broadway stage hit. Well, that's a clue, Libby. Tell me what she looks like. Oh, she's fairly tall, a little over five feet five inches. Her hair is brown with lots of coppery glint, and she has big blue-green eyes. And quite vivid coloring, the Irish rose type sort of? Mm, you're getting close. Now I'll give you another clue. She's noted for that lovely coloring. In fact, she has one of the most dazzling complexions in Hollywood. Oh, must be a Lux girl. Of course she is, Mr. Kennedy. Now then, who is she? Well, I'm sure that young Irish beauty you've just described must be Jean Tierney. Oh, right you are. I really ought to give you $64 for answering that correctly. What I said about Jean Tierney's complexion probably gave it away. Of course, you know she depends on Lux toilet soap for day-by-day beauty care. She finds it a wonderful way to keep exquisite skin looking smooth and fresh. Women everywhere are finding that so. In recent tests, actually three out of four complexions improved in a short time with gentle Lux soap care. Now here's how Jean Tierney takes her Lux soap facial. I cover my face generously with the rich lather and work it in thoroughly. I rinse with warm water, then cold, and pat my face dry with a soft towel. That's all, but it works. And there's the simple complexion care nine out of ten famous screen stars depend on. Lux toilet soap is a real beauty soap, you see. As fine a soap as money can buy. So here's a Hollywood tip for women everywhere. Use Lux toilet soap every day. See if you're not delighted with the new loveliness it brings your skin. And now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. Act two of Seventh Heaven, starring Jennifer Jones as Dion, Van Johnson as Chico... And Jean Hersholt as Father Cheviot, with Billy Gilbert as Boole. It's a few hours later, and dawn is just breaking over Paris, as Chico and Dion return from their walk. Slowly they mount the long, open stairway to Chico's room, high on the rooftop. Only a little more. Tired. No, but you, you live so high up. That's what I like, up, up where the air is clean and you can breathe. Give me your hand. No, please, I, I can manage. You're not afraid, are you? No, that's right. Never be afraid of anything. Come on. This is my room. Well, go in, go in. Like it? What's the matter with you? Can't you speak? It's very nice. But it's so small. I thought... Oh, you mean it's only one room, huh? Yes. Oh. Well, that's all I ever needed. It's all you'll ever need. It's yours. Mine? But what about you? Oh, don't worry about me. I must go to work now. Today I wash the streets so they'll never be washed as never before. Everyone will talk of it. And, and tonight? Tonight? Oh, I'll stay with Bull. He'll be glad to have me. Is that why you were worried? I, I don't like you to give up your room just for me. When will you come back? You want me to? If you will pray. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll come back for all my meals. Breakfast, dinner, and supper. I'll, I'll cook them for you, Chico. Wait. Are you a good cook? I think so. Well, we'll see. Now, remember what I said. Be afraid of nothing. Be brave and be happy. Huh? Yes, I am happy. I'll owe it to you. No, no, no. To yourself. Goodbye, Dion. Goodbye, Chico. Today I am a street washer. Today I wash the street. Today hey, Chico, I am a street so washer. Today I, I am happy. Look at that street. It's clean as the wind. It's been that way all week. <laughs> Maybe there's something else to make you happy, too, eh? Oh, that's right. Today I'm going to clean the people on the street also. <laughs> Who's there? It's me, Bull. Papa Bull. Uh, hello. Come in, Papa Bull. Was that you singing, Diane? <laughs> Was it so very bad? Well, it wasn't good. <laughs> uh, but it was good to hear it. <laughs> I just saw Chico on the street. He was singing, too. Loud. Was he? 
come briefly to him. To me, it's so new. Until you came up here, eh? Until I came here, Papa Boo. Until I climbed up here with him that morning. Six flights into the sweet air. A fine view of heaven you get from here. It is heaven. Seventh heaven. Mm. I suppose Nana will be really surprised when she finds you've been staying here. Nana? Yeah, they're letting her out of jail tomorrow. I thought you ought to know. Yes. Yeah. It was just one week of heaven, wasn't it? I knew it couldn't last. You're still afraid of her? Well, of course, it could be fixed. How? Huh. Well, if you were really Chico's wife. Huh? Why should he want me for his wife? Well, he prayed for one once. He told me. A wife with yellow hair. Much prettier than mine. He doesn't want me, Papa Boo. I don't blame him either. Well, I don't know. He's very funny this week. He sings all the time. He's always done that, hasn't he? Yes, but I don't know. It's never been so loud. Chico. Hey, Chico. You're asleep. I can't. I want to speak to you, Chico. All night I've been wanting to... And all night I've been telling you to go to sleep. Go on. You've been awake too? Well, I have problems. You're thinking of the war. I hear it may be declared any day. No, no, it's not the war. What's that got to do with me? This is the greatest problem in the world, Boo. I've almost come to a decision. What is it? Shut up. All right. I've decided. What? Bull, have your taxi at my house at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Why? I'm going to be married to Dion. Chico! Dion! Chico! Come here. Chico, you, you're home so early. I haven't got your dinner yet. I know, I know. That's all right. Let me look at you. I, I haven't had a chance to... It's my hair. To... Oh, you look nice. I- I've just been making some soup for Madame Gobert. Her husband is sick. She's at a window. Yes, Madame Gobert. It will be ready in a moment. Thank you. Thank you, Madame Chico. Here, here. What's the matter with you? <laughs> you don't like to be called Madame Chico, huh? No. Oh, no. It, it's not bad. Here, look at this. What is it? It's a paper. A legal one. I spent all morning at the bureau. I had to prove I was born, and you were born. And then they let me have it. Chico, it's a marriage license. Yep. We have to have a license for everything now. Chico, you want to marry me? Well, I guess so. Yes. Why? I don't know. You're so strange. You're not like anyone. Oh, that's true. There's nobody like me. I'm a very remarkable fellow. But I, I don't understand you. You say you'll marry me, but you... You don't... What? You don't say anything. Oh. <laughs> you mean you want me to make love to you? Yes, Chico. <laughs> well, I feel like a fool. Oh, Chico... Chico, please. Well, I'll do it this once, but no more. Dion, you and I, I mean, well, well, it's like arithmetic. Arithmetic? Of course. You and I are each one, and one, and one makes one. You understand? No. Oh, stop it, please. I can't. Well, you asked me to make love to you, and I'll look at you. Well, this way, then, look. I am Chico. You are Dion. This, this is heaven. Say it again. Chico, Dion, heaven. Again. Chico. Oh, stop it. (laughs) Chico, I can't believe it. It's so hard to believe. Well, it's true. What brought you to me, Chico? I can't remember. Was it God? No, not God. I came to you... And you to me, because that's the way things happen. And we're together because we want it so. We have courage. That's my religion, Dion. 
It's, it's the idea that makes you what you are. You must put courage inside of you. That, that's what I do. That's why I'm such a remarkable fellow and astonish myself with what I am. That's why I'm an atheist. No! What? Oh, Chico, please, not now. Don't say those things now. I'm too happy. Too happy, Chico. This must be it, Monsieur Poussac. It's a long time. Who is it? It's I, Father Chibion. Father. Good day, Diane. Maybe come in. Chico isn't home, Father. He's gone out to work. We didn't come to see Chico. This is Monsieur Poussac. He wants to speak to you, my child. To me? If I may. We've been looking for you all week, Diane. I, I've been here, Father. But at three o'clock, Chico is coming back. We're, we're going to be married, Father. Married? Uh, Monsieur Poussac, perhaps I'd better leave you alone. Goodbye, my child. Goodbye, Father. What is it, please? You're much younger and much prettier than I thought you'd be. What is it you want? May I sit down, Leon? You know you don't belong in this quarter. I hope I'm not too late to take you out of it. I don't know what you mean. Are you from the police? <laughs> no, I'm a lawyer. I have some news for you. You didn't know that your uncle had died, I suppose. Why? He left you and your sister his sole heirs, but there's, well, there's a little difficulty about your sister. You'll receive it all. It's a matter of some 30,000 francs. Well? What would I have to do? <laughs> you don't seem as surprised as I thought you'd be. Your uncle has made a few stipulations. You'd have to leave here, of course. And what about Chico? Chico? Oh, I'm afraid not, Dion. But Chico's my husband. Or will be. It's the will be that presents the difficulties. Now, uh, this money is... I don't want it. What? Not without Chico. I see. I ought to know better than to interfere in these things. But you're being very foolish. You could have everything now. But without him, there well, wouldn't be anything, would it? Oh, I'm sorry, Dion. Because I think you're making a great mistake. This Chico is probably a fine fellow, but... He's uh... a wonderful fellow. A remarkable fellow, Mr. Oh, I'm sure he must be. Nevertheless... What's that? The crowd. They're coming down the street. Listen. Well, it's here. What? It must be. They wouldn't cheer like that for anything else. It's war. War? Then that means Chico. All of us. No. Chico. 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 Chico, where are you? Chico. It's war. That's what they say, war. Where's Chico? Have you seen him? Oh, he's gone to report. All the men have to report. Will he come back? Can I see him? Yes. Oh, <laughs> the bull. Don't worry. He'll be back. They won't send him for him at once. What should I do? Go back to the house. Wait for him there. Go on. He would have been there now. Shh. There'll be time when I come back. I'm not afraid, Chico. No, no, you mustn't be. The women take the men's places in war. They'll take care of you. The certificate says so, you see. It says... What is it, Chico? I'm a fool. It says wife, and you're not my wife. I'll stay here. I'll be safe here. No, no. We'll be married now, this minute. How, Chico? By ourselves, because I say so, because I will it. I, Chico, say we are married. Dear Lord, I... No, no, I, I can't ask God. I'm an atheist. But I must appeal to someone, to something. There is a God, Chico. Oh, if it were only true. Do you know that it isn't? Try him, Chico. Try him once more. Dear God. God in heaven. Perhaps you are there. Perhaps not. Perhaps you gave me this wife. Perhaps not. But if there is any truth in the idea of you, please make this a true marriage. I take you, Dion, for my wife. I take you, Chico, for my husband. Forever. I must go now, Dion. Don't be afraid. I won't. Let me come to the street with you. No, don't. Don't follow me. Chico. Stand still. Don't move. I want to remember you like this. And Dion... I'll come to you every day at this hour. 
Every morning you'll feel me here with you, with my arms around you. Goodbye, Diana. Goodbye. Nana. I've been waiting for your husband to leave. Didn't Boo tell you that I needed you? That I wanted you to come home with me? I'm married now, Nana. The war's got him. The war. And you're coming with me. You can't make me. No? Perhaps the whip will help. Would you like to feel it again? It's no use, Nana. I'm not afraid of you anymore. Come here. This isn't been the way I used to be. I'm not like that anymore, Nana. Come here to me. I'm coming, Nana. You, my sister. My sister who filled me with care because I was alone. Because I was helpless. It's you who are alone now, Nana. It's you who are helpless. What are you talking about? I'm telling you that you will never touch me again. I'll kill you. No, no. If you ever come back here, I'll kill you. Stay away from me. You can never frighten me again. Never. Do you hear? Stay away. Stay because away. I'm brave. I'm not afraid anymore. I'm the wife of Chico. And I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. <laughs> In a few minutes, Mr. DeMille and our stars will bring us Act Three of Seventh Heaven. And now, here's a patriotic young man clinching an important business deal. How much do I get for that fat I brought you, Mr. Brown? Here you are, Sonny. Eight cents for the two pounds and four red ration points. Guess your mother will be glad to get those extra points. Thanks, Mr. Brown. Know something? Mom gets a ration point since she lets me keep the money for all the fat we turn in. Guess what I'm going to do with it. What, Sonny? I'm saving it to help buy a present for my brother. He's out in the Pacific, you know. Tell your mom she knows what she's doing when she saves those used fats. Helping to make the war shorter, that's what. Mom sure wants to do that. Sonny's mother realizes that fats are essential materials of war. That's why the government wants every American housewife to keep on saving them till J-Day, the day the Japs are licked. That day will be nearer if nothing is allowed to slow up the steady stream of supplies going to our fighting men. Remember, vital materials of war are made from your used cooking fat. Fats are needed for the manufacture of rubber, rubber boats, parachutes, medicines, and munitions. Every drop of waste fat, no matter how black or burned, is essential. Don't forget, the Japs still hold the countries from which we used to import about a billion pounds of fats and oils each year. Your government urges you not to relax your efforts for an instant in the vital fat salvage campaign. Keep on saving and turning in your used cooking fat as a service to your country. And remember, for every pound you turn in, your butcher gives you four cents and two red ration points. And now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. After the play, you're invited backstage for a brief chat with our stars. Here's Act Three of Seventh Heaven, starring Jennifer Jones as Dion, Van Johnson as Chico, and Jean Hersholt as Father Chevion, with Billy Gilbert as Boo. <laughs> roadside near the Marne River. Waiting for orders, a battalion of French infantry sprawls wearily on the muddy ground, heedless of the shells that come screaming ever closer. Then down the road, a solitary figure is seen. One of the soldiers leaps to his feet and dashes toward him. Oh, oh, hey! up, my friend! Well... <laughs> What are you doing here? What am I doing? I'm in the war, like you, Chico. <laughs> Where's Eloise? You've left her home. Eloise. Eloise is dead. Your taxi cab dead? It was very sad, Chico. Ah, oh, my poor Eloise. It was in Paris. Here was the German army, marching through Campien, on to the very gates of the city. Here was our whole reserve force in back of the city. What did Papa Joff do? He called on us, the taxi cabs of Paris. We brought up our whole reserve. What a sight. There was Eloise in the very front, going like a red-hot devil, with seven soldiers inside of her, five on top. She rose to the occasion, the old girl, never missed fire once, got to the front line first, was hit with a shell, blew up, collapsed in the mud. Heaven rest her soul. Poor Eloise. Yes. Poor fool. You tell me, did you see her before you left the arm? Yes, Chico. She is fine. And her sister? None of troubles her no more, Chico. 
He has disappeared. And the Anne, she works. Works in the factory. They make shells. Shells? Hiko, a very strange girl. I do not comprehend her. She says that every day she stands before the machinery. It whispers to her, shells, shells to kill, shells, shells to kill. And every day also, in the morning, she goes back to your room on the roof, Chico. She says you are there, and it makes her feel better. I worry, Chico. I do not understand it. I understand it, Boo. I am there. Every day at 11. What? I... Well, goodbye, Boo. Goodbye? What is happening? We're going to move up. It started. A big offensive. You be careful, Chico. <laughs> they can't touch me, Boo. I'm Chico. My life is charmed. Their bullets are flattened against my chest. Still, you be careful. <laughs> You'll see. Goodbye, Boo. And when you go back, tell her that, that I'll be there every day. <laughs> for work tomorrow. By orders of the war ministry, this factory is closed. But, Mademoiselle, it means the armistice. Armistice! Leon, did you hear? Look at peace, peace. I dreamed of it every night, every day. And then he said you were not to come to work tomorrow. Does it mean peace, Father? I don't know, my child. They're talking of it. And then Chico will come home. He will, won't he, Father? Jan, you never heard from him in all these years? No. But that doesn't mean... It doesn't mean he's dead, Father. I know that. You see, when he went away, we promised that we'd join each other every morning. And he's never failed me. Even when I was working at the factory and all that noise, I'd feel him standing at my side. And when I worked at night and slept during the day, no matter how tired I was, I always woke up around at 11 o'clock. My child, I... No, Father, no. Don't say I imagined it all these years. It was faith, the thing you preach. Yes, it was faith. It, it, it's getting near the time now. I'll go home. Jan, Monsieur Pesac was here this morning. He's back from the front. Ah, then he'll come to see me, too. Every leave he's had, he's come to see me. He's been very kind to me, Father. Once he even asked me to marry him. <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? When I have a husband already. Why do you look at me like that? Nico and I, we were married, Father. Yes, my child. I think you were. Monsieur Brissac. I've been waiting here for you. You are back for good, monsieur? I hope so. It's nice to see you. They say there's going to be peace. Do you think so? Again, I hope so. I hope so, too. Then they'll all come back. All our friends. You'll need them now, Dion. What? What did you say? I've just come from the war office. I've been digging in the files all morning. I found this. What is it? A religious medal. Identification disc. There's no last name. You don't... Leon, please, now listen. It comes from a German prison hospital. He was dying then. A long time ago. No. No, no. Leon. But he came to me. Did he? Um, he didn't come. No, Leon. No. He couldn't have come. Please, Dion. You must have courage now. Courage. 
You never came to me at all. I just imagine it. Yes. You seem so foolish now. I was so sure. I thought that God was helping me for four years. <laughs> what nonsense, what childish nonsense. Dion, you must come away from here. Let me take care of you. You? Please, Dion. Why not? What does it matter? I call this place heaven. I never want to see it again. Dion, what is it? Nothing. Eleven o'clock. I got so in the habit of believing. Listen. Look, the crowd. It's peace. Peace. They've signed the armistice. Leanne, you hear them? It's peace, my child. Leanne, they signed. They signed. Over. The war's over. The war's over. I want to pray, Father. Help me to pray. All of us will pray. Thank God. Gloria in excelsis. No, Leo. stop it. Praying to what I'd like to know. Tell me. To a God? There is no God. Leanne, don't. Let me alone. I know what I'm talking about. I believed I was married and there was a God protecting me. Well, there's nothing. It's all false. My hope in Chico was false. I pretended this place was heaven. I clung to it as Chico told me to. But it's all false. He's dead. <laughs> now when I want your God most, he's not here. He doesn't exist. There's nothing, nothing. Dion, please come away with me. Yes, yes, that's right. Take me away. Take me wherever you want me to go, anywhere. The war's over, isn't it? It's over. It's over. It's over. Dion, Dion. Listen. It's Dion. Chico. Chico. Dion. Dion, where are you? Where are you, Dion? Here, here, Chico. Come closer. Let me touch you. Chico, you don't see me. No. No, Dion. I can't see. But my eyes are filled with you. Oh, my Chico. Then it's true. You have been here always. And I thought God had deserted me. No, Dion. He never has. At the hospital, they thought I was dead. Dead! I've been hit by every cell that's made, but nothing can kill me. I don't think I'll ever die. Chico. And I'll see you again, too, Dion. They can't keep me blind because it's all true. Those big thoughts I had, that was God after all. He's within us, Dion. I know it. And now that I'm blind, I see. <laughs> I tell you, I'm a very remarkable fellow. <laughs> In ten years, I've enjoyed no more appealing performances on the Lux Radio Theater than those given by our stars tonight. Jennifer Jones, Van Johnson, and Jean Hersholt. That's good of you to say, Mr. DeMille. The tenth anniversary must have made you in a, put you in a very good mood, Mr. DeMille. Yes, C.P., it's not often that a man of your age can celebrate a birthday and feel good about it. You mean a man of my age? <laughs> producing the Lux Radio Theater has helped me keep my youth. And uh, lose your hair. <clears throat> <laughs> Mr. DeMille, I, I would have brought you an anniversary present, but I didn't know exactly who to give it to. Uh, what were you going to bring, Jennifer? A cake of Lux toilet soap? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm afraid one cake wouldn't go far among our 30 million listeners, Jean. Oh, they are in on this party, too, huh? Yeah, they certainly are. But don't worry about them. They probably already have Lux toilet soap. But to come back to you three, who have been our real anniversary present tonight, I understand, Van, that you... Finished your new picture, 30 Seconds Over Tokyo. Yes, and one of the biggest thrills I got was not just working on the picture, but for meeting Major Lawson and learning how to fly those bombers. You mean, Van, you actually had instructions on how to handle the plane? Well, I, I really had to if I was going to make a believable pilot in the picture. Oh, but that's nothing. Look at Jennifer. She took a complete course as nurse's aide to prepare her part, and since she went away. Well, practice makes perfect, Jennifer. <laughs> yes, and I'm still working as a nurse's aide. <laughs> that, that's splendid. Um... These young people really uh, study for their parts, Gene, and get results. Listen, C.P., I give full credit to Van and Jennifer. 
But when I made that picture country doctor about the Dion Quint, uh, family, I didn't study to deliver babies. And uh, <laughs> look at the results I got. Quintuplets. <laughs> <laughs> now, what about you? Can you produce five Dr. Wassels? <laughs> no, no, only one, Jean. But next Monday night, we're going to have that one on the Lux Radio Theater. Oh, that's well, Sidney. Dr. Wassel on, on Lux next Monday night? Yes, it's another of the plays our listeners selected for our 10th anniversary season. And our stars will be Gary Cooper, Harold Thurston, and Barbara Britton. And as perhaps you know, Dr. Wassel was produced by... Se oh, well, we won't go into that. Uh, it is, however, one of the great true stories of the war, a story of a man's love for his fellow man and a woman's love for a man. And through it runs the spirit of heroism, loyalty, and sacrifice that have inspired our fighting men in all the corners of the globe. Mm, Dr. Wassell will be mighty welcome in our home next Monday night, C.P. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. You gave us a wonderful birthday present and tonight's performance. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Gary Cooper, Carol Thurston, and Senior Hasso in The Story of Dr. Wassell. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Seventh Heaven by Austin Strong was originally produced by John Golden. Van Johnson appeared through the courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer and will soon be seen in 30 seconds over Tokyo. Jennifer Jones is currently appearing in David O. Selznick's picture, Since You Went Away. Jean Hersholt is star of the radio program, Dr. Christian. Third in tonight's play were Virginia Gordon, Norman Field, Dick Ryan, Charles Seal, Eddie Marr, Jay Novello, and Leon Souza. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This program is broadcast to our fighting forces overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear the story of Dr. Wassell with Gary Cooper and Carol Thurston.